Alabama Crimson Tide football, LandryFootball.com. Chris, thank you so much for being a part of the show. I hope you're having a great afternoon. I'm doing good, Ryan. It's good to be with you as always. Three weeks away from tomorrow. Crunch time for what you guys do leading into the NFL draft. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, of course, doing the consulting work for teams. But we are locked and loaded on LandryFootball.com. Got all our draft boards up and how draft boards really look and where how many guys are you know given um, uh, you know, immediate starter grades, how many guys that are – uh, given uh, uh, potential starter grades and in uh, exactly how they fit into this draft process, where the strengths, where is the the gaps, and then we put uh, you know uh, scouting reports, just like done inside a draft room. We provide that for you, so um, we're really excited about it. Great feedback, and uh, we got a you know obviously our great discount, so it's a great time to get involved. And it is the stretch run of trying to figure out from a draft management standpoint. Uh, where is going to be the best value for some of these players? Chris, Josh Jacobs did his second pro day, and there's been a lot said about his 40-yard dash. And I know we talked about a couple of weeks ago, but why is this such a big concern? I mean, what, what was the need to go back and maybe rerun the 40? He was able to trim a little bit off of it, but maybe not as much as some people would have liked. Uh, just your thoughts of Josh Jacobs coming back and running the 40-yard dash and doing a – well. Because he didn't run it all that well, you know, there's always that I didn't have a good day, you know, you a little tired. I mean, a lot of things. You just have a bad day, and so you want to do it again. And the more you run it, the more you confirm what, what his time is. You have to look at people say, well, why do you run the play? I don't get it. I'm like, well, the reason why we do it, because it's a frame of reference of how a guy compares to other players that have come out in the draft in the past. Uh, remember, a guy's speed, people say, well, you can see how fast he is on the field. No, you can see how fast he is on the field against college players. We're looking at how he translates to the next level. There's more to the speed than just the time speed. It's how you run. Uh, there's much more value in how a guy runs the three-cone drill, um, and that to me is really valuable. Um, and so I think that he's a little bit better than people think in terms of his speed, his playing speed. but it doesn't mean that he's less of a player. What it means is perhaps he's maybe a little bit different. Maybe he doesn't have that, that second gear, that burst, to be that breakaway guy at the next level, as you might think. But it does, you know, neither did Emmett Smith. You know, Emmett Smith didn't have long speed. He had great burst. So my point is, is it just gives you a further, further definition of what he is in terms of style and value. And in some people's eyes, it may, you know, they may, may not be as appealing when they thought he may be was a 4-4 guy or whatever. But that, to me, is a little bit overblown. But the reason why it's done is just to be thorough. It's just like you retest a guy on, on an intelligence test or what have you. Some guys they have a bad day. You get tired. You know, you just want to want to be thorough. He's one of the elite players in this draft. He very likely could be the first running back off the board, still will be. So there's always the due diligence to make sure. It's a it's a it's a uh industry where you measure nine times before you cut, Ryan. And that's that's the best way I can describe it. We're talking to Chris Landry, LandryFootball.com. It's your comprehensive website as we lead down twenty two days away from the NFL draft in Nashville, Tennessee. Chris, where do you see Josh Jacobs and maybe some of those likely teams that are needing a running back with his style and, and what he brings to the franchise or what he would bring to a franchise? Well, I, listen, I don't know where he's going to go. I think he has value in in terms of um, first-round value. I think it's definitely possible. I think it's probable, and I think any number of teams. You know, the thing is we don't know about any trades or movements, so you can sit there and say, all right, I could see him going – kind of in that 18 to, to, to 28 range. But I don't know necessarily it's going to be one of those teams picking. It could be a team moving. I mean, there are a number of teams that need good backs. Um, there's no question about that. So we'll see. I mean, it could, it could be a, you know, a, a Raiders. or could, I mean, it could be any any number of people that, that, that want to add a guy of this versatility. The thing I'll say about him is the guy can do everything very, very well. He's a complete back. And I think he's going to play and be an effective player in the league for, for quite some time. Chris, when you look at a guy like Kyler Murray 
and you see that he's adding so much weight to weigh in. And and you know what he's doing because he wants to get it on the chart. He does this here. He runs the the this here. He does this, and and he's trying to like juggle all these metrics and make sure that they're where everybody wants him. How do you calculate that in your brain when you know what a player's up to? Well, it's it's a lot of foolishness. It's something that the agents do, and they try to be cute. Again, they get a guy as big as they can with water weight, and then they don't run, and then they lose the weight, and then run. Well, I mean. You know, we know how to um, convert all those things. The bottom line is this. Um, He's got a frame that's not going to get much bigger. Can he develop and get a little bit more defined and get a little bit more more physical um, in in terms of handling some of the physical part of the game? Yeah, a little. He's not going to be a guy. He doesn't have the frame of a 6'2", 6'3", guy. So he's not going to be, well, like a Jalen Hurts, for example. Completely different body type. So... But it's it's a little bit of foolishness, and people like to talk about it. It's not something we pay any attention to because we kind of know what this whole process is all about. Look, you, you like Kyler Murray, you don't. You, you think he's going to be a really good fit and going to be a shorter version of Patrick Mahomes and make plays and be a little, you know, or you don't. And a few little a pounds here or there is not going to change your view of him positively or negatively. So as I said before many times, it's about whether you are willing to embrace his style to fit what you want. And if you are willing to do that, perhaps the Cardinals are, then that's what they'll do. Um, not everybody's willing to do it. In fact, I don't know that, that, that there's a lot of teams that would be willing to do it. But all it t- takes is one. And if that one is the Cardinals, then he could be the first pick in the draft. Chris, when we try to make guesses, and and I love the the draft season, but I'm I'm gonna read off something to you real quick. Okay, this is Alabama's offensive line uh, over the midpoint of the spring training. Alex Leatherwood six six three ten, Evan Neal six seven three sixty, Chris Owen six three three fifteen, Emil Ikior six three three thirty eight, Jedrick Wills six five three sixteen. The first two guys in six and seven are three twenty five, six seven, six four, three forty two. Uh, is that anything that that is a like a little bit of a hint? Maybe they want to go back to uh, being a little bit more power. I mean, they're adding. I mean, they're taking some tackles and moving them inside and kind of making some power there. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think that's absolutely true, and it's it's a byproduct of what they're trying to do with these guys' bodies and and filling it out, be a little stronger, be a little little more physical at the point of attack. I don't I don't that is not a uh listen, these guys are are well built, well constructed in terms of their natural qualities, but now what they're trying to do is they're definitely trying to focus on being stronger at the point of attack. That is definitely the plan. It's definitely the idea. And you know, listen, I mean I was in fact I was doing a, a, a an interview recently just talking about Jonah Williams who's coming out no longer there. Guy's one of the best run blockers. I, I, I think he's advanced, and so I don't think it's a change of what they're doing. But I think getting more guys that can do that and be dominant at getting movement and running their feet through defenders in the run game—that's definitely what they want to do. And so um, I, I think that you know they recruit those type of players. They run. I mean, most most of those guys are guys that just have that type of frame that can get bigger and stronger. It just takes time and work work from Scott Cochran and his staff, but it's work by those players to have the right nutrition and the right work. It doesn't happen overnight, but I think what we're seeing is is a lot of that, uh, uh, not changeover, but uh, uh, focus, I would say. We're, we're talking to Chris Landry, LandryFootball.com. Chris, any thoughts on what's happening there at Cleveland? Are you buying what Freddie Kitchens and this management staff is doing, because they seem to be making a lot of moves and gab- grabbing a lot of our attention. I mean, we, we may be doing that for the Alabama perspective uh, because of Freddie's ties back here to the university, but it seems like they're they're moving and shaking up in Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, well, and look, I think people around the country in the NFL realm are talking about them, and it probably has nothing to do with Freddie Kitchens. So it gives you an idea that you know they're looking at you know Baker Mayfield, you got Odell Beckham Jr. and Jarvis Landry. You've got, you know, uh, Kareem Hunt added to the backfield with Nick Chubb. Pretty good offensive line. So everybody's looking at it. And now I would say that uh, maybe to the point of a little bit overhype, they're improved. They're definitely improved. I, I would would pump the brakes on, well, 
you know, that they're the Super Bowl favorite and all that kind of stuff because still think it needs to come together. There's going to be an adjustment. Freddie did a really good job when you consider that he was running backs coach going into last season and then became the key guy, became the play caller when Todd Haley was let go and then obviously ended up getting the job because of the job that he did with Baker Mayfield in that offensive group. But, you know, there's some changeovers. There's always that continuity factor, getting things cohesive, and I have every reason to believe that they're going to be improved. How much improved? Heck, I don't know. That, that's what the football season's all about. It's a long football season in, in, the, in the NFL. So I think that Freddie uh, is up to the challenge. We'll see. There's going to be growing pains. There needs to be a certain level that you don't get any patience in, in the NFL now. So there'll be criticism if it's, if it's not a big hit because there's heightened expectations. But, um, you know, Freddie's a first-time head coach. Uh, you know, and at this level, it's going to be a challenge. But uh, there'll be growing pains, but I think he's up to the challenge. Chris Landry, LandryFootball.com. Chris, I want to go to Cliff Kingsbury just a couple of seconds. We have Coach Dallings on, and we highly respect him. He's the age of 84, and he brings a lot of opinions to the table. Uh, being from the NFL side of things with Tom Landry and his ties there to the University of Alabama, he always brings up a conversation. He said when you look at Cliff Kingsbury coming from Texas Tech, that he's going to have a hard time building respect in the NFL from – not from the management, from the players inside that locker room at his age and maybe the lack of success, uh, you know, getting kind of pushed out of Texas, saying uh, Texas Tech, and kind of having to build that respect in that locker room. How big of a challenge will that be? I think it is, but I think it depends on the situation. There are some people that thought, and it's a little bit different, but um, let's take a guy like Sean McVay, who had not even been a head coach before right. and was – kind of a guy that, all right, you know, there was some of that. Oh, you're kidding me? This guy is, like, younger than some of the players on the team. He's younger than Andrew Whitworth. Um, you know, the success kind of leads to the respect. I think Coach is on to something, though. Uh, and, of course, Coach has not only the background for all the things you mentioned, but there's a little bit of a Cardinals background as well. You know, and, and uh, while – I affectionately call him the old man Bill Bidwell uh, is no longer and well, he's no longer involved. His son Michael runs the team. Uh, the Cardinals are not very good. I am not as high on Cliff Kingsbury as other people are. I don't think he's Sean McVay 2.0. I don't think he's an offensive genius. Um, I think he's got some good offensive concepts. I was not overly impressed with what he did. Now Texas Tech is not a place that you're going to win and compete very you know what Mike Leach did was impressive that's not going to stand regularly but I thought his teams were consistently out coached at Texas Tech I, I think it's going to be a huge challenge um you know enhanced by the fact that his team's not very good um you got a management that decided a year ago that Steve Wilkes was the coach of their future and they traded up in the draft to draft Josh Rosen to be their quarterback of the future it's not even a year later, and both those guys are gone. And so now their future is Cliff Kingsbury and maybe Kyler Murray. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. Um, I, I think if you're going to hire Kingsbury and he feels best about maybe putting an offense around a, a, a Kyler Murray, I, I could understand it in, in terms of theory. I wish him well, and I hope they have success, but I've got my doubts because I just don't think the team is very good. And I think there are a lot better coaches out there that I would have hired than Kingsbury personally. And if they don't win and they don't have success, um, I have uh, 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 I, I would aside with uh, Coach Stalling. I I, I I don't know if you asked him, but I could about imagine what he would think. Probably the same thing as I would think about Kingsbury coming out saying that. Every 20 minutes, he's going to give his players a break so they can check their phone on social media. Um, boy, we're living in a world. Oh, I can't hold on, hold on a minute. I must that. have missed this. I, maybe no, I was you, dialed you, in with no. basketball. Did this really yeah, happen? Yeah, you, you missed. Yeah, this, this really happened. He thinks that players of today are distracted in meetings. So every 20, I, it may have been 20 minutes. It might have been 40. I could care less, quite frankly. But that he's going to give his guys like a few breaks 
so their attention span could be at a high level so they could check their phone and check their messages and then come back more recharged. It's the new way of coaching players, I guess, in his mind. So I think I'm um, going to ask Coach Saban if he's willing to do that this t- today. He's yeah, doing yeah, a press I, conference I, I, at, at 6. Maybe I'll slip over there and ask him. Yeah, but, I, I think you ought to do that. I think you ought to duck after you ask it, too. Uh, <laughs> so, I, uh, yeah, I, you know, listen, I'm, I, I, you know, I wouldn't be all that impressed. And uh, I, I would think, you know, um, <laughs> you know, I would be I'm Coach sorry. Stalling. I just I look at Coach Saban and I look at this look that because he gives us that look like go straight to mm, and don't go come back. Yeah, I would get that look. Yeah, no, I just uh, I just think think about that. So I mean, imagine Coach Stalling would have a view of that as well, <laughs> probably along the same lines. So anyway, I don't I don't mean to make fun. I all do respect to him and I wish him well. I. I, I just hope it's a lot better than than uh, than I think it's going to be um, in, in Arizona. I'm, that is that is something that I think is going to carry on for a couple of minutes when we continue the conversation. LandryFootball.com right now is a fun time of the year. If you love this analytics side of things, it's scouting season, and you want to trust those who have been inside that room, and I'm sure we'll talk about this in the next couple of times as we lead down to Nashville, Tennessee. It's scouting season, and there's no better place to be than LandryFootball.com where veteran NFL scout Chris Landry takes you steps to step through the free agent, the draft process around the NFL. Learn what those NFL teams and college programs already know by joining LandryFootball.com today. Free agency, the NFL draft, college recruiting, coaching moves, roster analysis, college and NFL teams, and the latest inside scoop. Also, it is less than a magazine subscription. And now with that special scouting discount, you can get it right there. LandryFootball.com, 50% off for a limited time right now. LandryFootball.com, Rush the Field podcast, which is dedicated to the college game. And right now it's spring games. Trouble for Georgia. Man, that's a tease. And look at those Oklahoma Sooners, also the NFL side of things, on Tuesday and Thursday. And also do not forget to sign up about middle way down on the right-hand side. It's a war room. Drop your email. They'll send you an email. You confirm it. That is your email address with the confirmation. And you get a wonderful little war room things that uh, Chris can give you some insight on. It's LandryFootball.com. Chris, as always, we appreciate you for being a part of the show.